Vision Financial Podcast with Luke Smith on Canberra's 2CC. And it's a Friday afternoon, which means it's time to talk dollars and cents with Luke Smith from uh, Envision Financial. Luke, good afternoon. Can't forget the name of the business this far into the game, buddy. How are you? You good? About to uh, do the same old joke about having the dollars and having the cents and so forth, and I thought, no, I've done that too often. I'll just get get on with it. So uh, I've I've tripped myself up with that one. But today we're talking about putting additional funds into our superannuation, and uh, I've got to say, just before we start on that, I saw in the news that uh, there's been a bit of a change to uh, <clears throat> the rules for people with low incomes. Previously, people with extremely low incomes, there was no requirement for their employer to put money into super. Uh, now that threshold has been lifted. So if you earn $1, then uh, I presume there's uh, nine cents of it has got to go into uh, into your super. Exactly right. Previously, you had to earn a certain amount over a designated period of time to be entitled to superannuation guarantee. So I think it's a great thing for younger people and those starting out in the workforce and it'll give them the compounding benefit of smaller entitlements sooner, which I think is a great thing for everybody. Okay, so obviously people that are in casual work or only lim- uh, work limited hours and so forth might not reach that threshold uh, in many weeks and therefore they end up with very little money in their superannuation uh, and that little mm. loophole has now been uh, closed. Now, when we talk about uh, adding money to our super, obviously it's always a good idea to boost your super balance if you can so that you'll end up with a better and uh, more well-funded retirement. But there are rules about how to go about it and limit on how much you can put in, aren't they? Exactly right. And I think I'll I touch on this because we've had three or four examples of this just this week where there's a little confusion over the limits and the thresholds and the ways that you can put money in, in a similar way that we spoke about last week about confusion or assumptions around retiring at 67 when people are actually confusing their eligibility for the age pension for the date they can retire. So this is a similar situation where we talk about money that goes into super where we want to claim a tax deduction and money that can go into superannuation where we do not want to claim a tax deduction. And touching on those legislation changes that have been passed, really, really good news for people out there. The proposals that were put forward in relation to the contribution rules have been passed. So people now from the 1st of July, 2022, will be able to make non-concessional contributions. And that's where you put already taxed money into superannuation, you'll be able to do that without having to meet a work test because that's now been removed up to the age of 75. So that's a great piece of legislation for those out there that have recently downsized or have exceeded their transfer balance cap or potentially have defined benefit pensions where their total super balance prevents them from putting money into super. They'll now be able to make withdrawals, transfer money into spouses' names and be able to have much better control over the tax profile of their super and equalisation of their retirement assets. But if we if we start with the deductible side of things, the word that we read in legislation is concessional. And if we swap out the word concessional for deductible, I find it's a lot easier for people to remember. $27,500 is the most you can put into super and be eligible for a tax deduction. And that includes what you get from your employer as a superannuation guarantee and what you put in yourself. So as long as you do not exceed 27,500, you can use salary sacrifice, you can use personal contributions, you can use money in your own name to increase the amount of money that goes into super and lower your taxable income each year so that your wages or your earnings are as efficient as possible. That's the first way that money can go in. The second way that money can go into superannuation is a non-deductible contribution or a non-concessional contribution for those that like the lingo. And that's just taking monies that you have already paid tax on or you've received after tax has been considered. So that could be the sale of an investment property, that could be an inheritance, that could be uh, a you win Powerball, It can come from anywhere and you would like to put that money into superannuation, but you don't want to claim a tax deduction and pay 15% putting it in. You just want to put 100% of your contribution into your superannuation account without any withdrawals coming from it. Now, the limit for that type of contribution is $110,000 
per financial year, or in certain situations, provided you meet other thresholds in relation to your total super balance, you could put $330,000 into the fund in one go, and that effectively locks you out for the next three years because you've put in a, really three lots of 110. Um, so there's a period that you can't add more money to super, but you can get a big lick in uh, in one go to bolster your super before you potentially start a pension in retirement. So basically the limit there is $110,000 per year, but you can put three years worth in in one go, but you can't do it again for another three years. That's exactly right. So if you think about it, you're bringing forward three individual years of contribution. Now, I also preface that by saying you need to check how much total superannuation you have, because if you are right up near the, the transfer balance cap limit of $1.7 million, or you've triggered uh, the bring forward rules in the past, you need to make sure that you are eligible to make the contribution. So I'd always advise people to just check that they haven't triggered any other consideration before they race out and throw $330,000 in because it can get a little muddy because these rates index uh, over time and you may have triggered that three-year rule in a previous financial year. So just be across the ancillary legislation. But another great way to get money into superannuation and another important point here is that the downsides of legislation rules have also just been changed. So the legislation has passed now that from the 1st of July 2022, you can be over the age of 60, not 65, sell your family home, put $300,000 into superannuation using the downsides of legislation, and then put another $330,000 in under the non-concessional or non-deductible limit as well. So that's a really, really powerful piece of legislation that I think everybody should just pull over and think about for a second, because if you generally retire at around age 60, the last thing you want to do to sell your house because it's holding a huge amount of your value is wait till age 65 to get a significant amount of money into super. With that piece of legislation passing, you can now be over the age of 60 when the transaction occurs put a huge amount of money into superannuation to start a tax-free pension. And I think that particular piece of legislation is going to have a huge impact on the quality of people's lifestyles and the choices that they can make around the way that they fund their retirement. And I think it's a wonderful thing that's got up. Okay, so that certainly is useful to know. So what are the things to consider when planning to add additional money to your super? So the first thing I would do, as I touched on just before, is look at your total super balance and make sure you can put in as much as you are allowed. So what I mean by that is if you are up around the transfer balance cap limit, let's say you only have $100,000 of space and you will reach the 1.7 limit, then you won't be able to throw in 330,000 because you will go over that cap that is applied to the transfer balance cap limit. So without getting too technical on a Friday, just check the other rules that apply to contributions before you go throwing in big amounts of money. But think about using the deductible limits to lower your taxable income this year. And it could be as simple as waiting until June, seeing how much money you have in the offset account of your home, for example, or in the bank because you've been diligently saving, and then adding up to the limit of 27500 taking into account what you've got from your employer. So that's a great way to lower your tax. That's also a great way to lower the tax on the sale of an asset. Let's say, for example, you sold an investment property and you're going to pay some capital gains tax. Maximising your contributions to lower your taxable income will ensure that you limit the amount of tax paid on wages and an asset that's been sold this year. So there are two great ways that people can use that legislation. And on the non-deductible side, Bolstering superannuation monies before retirement is very, very good. And the second thing is look at where you're going to add the money. So one strategic consideration that people should keep in mind is the transfer of assets when you pass. And an important point to consider with the non-deductible contributions is money that goes into super that is non-deductible comes out tax-free on your death to non-dependents. And a non-dependent in this example may be an adult child. So look at where you're going to make the contribution 
and dig a little deeper as to the tax components of your super. And again, the little deep on a Friday afternoon, but again, can have huge amounts of value when the estate planning side of things are considered because a non-dependent child pays 17% tax on monies that they receive. So if you can make this type of contribution and avoid that, it can have a huge amount of value when you pass your estate to the next generation. It'll also let you maximise the pension that you can draw on a tax-free basis from 60. Yeah, it is a little bit complicated, isn't it? And uh, you need a bit of a, a roadmap and a tour guide to navigate your way through all of these uh, these rules. But that's what you're there for, isn't it, Luke? Well, that's right. At, at, at six five, you can see me down the street from most places, and I'm, I'm I'm not above wearing an orange jumper, so I look like a traffic cone if I need to. So, yeah, exactly right. I'm happy to be somebody's tour guide. I'll tell my mum that could be my new occupation definition. <laughs> all right then. Now, there's an interesting arrangement called the transition to retirement. Now, that also provides opportunities to uh, maximise the benefits from your superannuation fund, doesn't it? That's exactly right. So an example of that, if we we jump back to a previous show, a transition to retirement is a pension that you draw at a maximum of 10% of your super balance. So the value of starting a pension ties into that deductible limit that we spoke about. Let's say you don't have any savings. Let's say you've paid your house off and... You've extinguished the mortgage and you'd like to maximise your deductions. Where you're over 60, it might be very advantageous to start a transition to retirement pension with the majority of your super balance, take out an amount of money tax-free as a pension, and then use the money that you took out to put back into superannuation and maximise that $27,500 limit and lower your taxable income if you're still working towards the end of the financial year. So there's an example of combining a pension strategy and a deduction strategy to get a better outcome from a tax perspective without actually changing the hours that you work or any other consideration on that front. So there are a number of um, magic tricks, if you like, that can be done. Um, It always strikes me as being a little bit like black magic because you're taking money back, uh, taking money out, putting it back in and getting a tax deduction for your trouble. It's, 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 It's almost too good to be true, isn't it? Well, again, the laws are about uh, about bending, not breaking, right? Let's, let's leave it at that for a Friday. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So obviously um, the, the aim of the game, the bottom line here, the reason for doing it all is to maximise your benefits in retirement, isn't it? That's exactly right. And, and some good examples are the downsize of contribution is a way to put money in, the deductible threshold is a way to put money in, and then the non-concessional limit is a way to put money in. There are also... CGT small business concessions for the self-employed out there. Um, That's another piece of legislation that will actively let you bolster superannuation where you were to uh, sell your business and you wish to get as much money into superannuation as possible. And we have one this week where um, somebody had sold their business and we were able to get um, just under $2 million into superannuation on a tax-free basis. And they'll be able to draw a, a concessionally taxed income stream from that that superannuation fund when they retire. So understanding your options, and I'd really preface for people, don't leave this to the last minute. You know, there are a number of strategies and considerations that can intertwine with each other. So knowing how the money can go in is very, very important. And then how to do it and how to use the resources that you have can help maximise the right structure and the right accounts. And leaving it to the last minute can cause some timing issues um, because separate superannuation funds may may need to be set up for various reasons. So it's important to do things in a timely, controlled manner to maximise the flexibility over what you're going to do in retirement. On the phone is Luke Smith from Envision Financial. We're talking about how much can I put into my super this year? Now, of course, we're not quite at the end of the financial year yet, but I suppose it's probably a good time to start planning ahead, isn't it? Luke, what are the key things to remember when making contributions? I think, you know, if you're early, then you're never late. And I I, I think when it comes to deductions, there's nothing more frustrating than when somebody walks in on the 29th of June and says, hey, how do I get this money in? And it's it's generally too late because remember, money must be cleared funds in the super account 
before the 30th of June. So if you want to dance at the end of the, the, the financial year, there, there can be tears. Um, so I think the important thing to remember is the new pieces of legislation that have been passed. So no work test under 75. The downsizer age from the 1st of July will be 60, not 65. I think that is huge. The ability to put superannuation contributions in and use the bring forward rules under 75 has also been passed from the 1st of July 2022. So that's an awesome piece of legislation for those that have a significant amount of money sitting outside of super and they haven't been working, so they haven't been able to meet a work test in the past. So look at your situation and think about adding to super to then increase your tax-free pension. That's a very, very good way to hold your retirement assets. And then when it comes to the deductible caps, look at your cap space. Look at how much comes from your employer. Look how much room you have between that and the limit and then work out how you can get money in before the 30th of June. And we touched on before the ad break, starting a transition to retirement pension or using lotto winnings or using money out of an offset account. If you can take money out of your home at 2.2% and put it into superannuation and potentially save 24%, I think that's a no-brainer when you look at the impact and the tax benefits of doing so. But keep in mind that there are pros and cons with everything. And if you're a long way from age 60 or your preservation age, keep in mind you're, you're tying up your money in super. But again, there's huge advantages for maxing out these limits. Also look at bringing your income down into a lower tax bracket, potentially by taking advantage of that deductible threshold. But again, engage your accountant, engage your professional, consider your broader situation. Um, and don't also assume that you need to top it up to 27,500 if your taxable income is not significant because you may actually be doing yourself a disservice because your contribution rate of tax and your income rate of tax may be very similar. So don't assume that a deductible contribution is great for everyone. Look at your broader tax position with your trusted advisor before you go and do these things. And again, do it early. Don't leave it too late because that's when there are tears. Very quick question. We've had a listener call in and ask, can those who have served in the military draw money from their military super and put it into their government super? Now, it's a question without notice. I don't know if you need to look it up yeah. or not. No, look, it's good. So, again, it depends on the type of fund. So let's take an example um, with CSS and PSS. CSS allows the transition to retirement legislation. The PSS does not. My understanding is that the MSBS does not either. Um, because of the way that that fund is structured. But there is nothing stopping somebody from using money that they already receive in a pension and then putting that into a standard accumulation account because you can't make this type of deductible contribution into the defined benefit schemes. They just don't accept that type of payment because of the way that they were created back in the day. So if you are in a PSS, CSS, DFRDB, MSBS, you need to put your contributions up to the deductible limit into another fund and also check with your defined benefit because they will tell you exactly how much space you have because they record your membership and your contribution rate against the cap on their relevant website. So you can log in or call and say, look, what is my concessional cap space? And those four funds will be able to tell you over the phone so you know exactly how much room you have to work with leading into 30 June. Fantastic. Luke, where can listeners get more information? Yeah, so 6260 4749 is the office number. We've got envisionfinancial.com.au on the website. So that, that hasn't changed, and the knowledge center is there for all the techies and the nerds. Um, there's lots to read on that site. We've got the podcast, The Strategy Stacker, Luke Talks Money on iTunes and Spotify. And we've got the website, uh, sorry, the, the YouTube channel, Envision Financial Canberra. And you can watch the shows uh, week by week that are recorded on your iPhone. Pause it, take some notes, keep watching, nothing to read. Nice and easy from the couch. Thanks very much. We'll catch you next week. See you next week. Thanks, mate.